It's time to get festive and breakfast is the best place to start. French toast with homemade eggnog. Thank y'all for stopping by the barn. It reminds me of an old song it does this time of year. Christmas time's coming, Christmas time's coming. I'm gonna sure enough be running to get me some eggnog. What? I don't know, that's how it goes. <laughs> yes, it is, Shan, it is. Eggnog is sort of like a custard in a way, but it's drinkable. And when you have eggnog and you're sitting around drinking that and you think, what would be really a traditional Christmas morning breakfast for us to have with our eggnog? I'm thinking French toast. But why dip it in egg batter when we can dip it into what? In the eggnog, yes. And it's gonna be oh so good and delicious. So we can have double dose eggnog, eggnog French toast, eggnog in a glass. Don't get no better than that. You know, to start off with, I need you to go to the chicken house and get you six eggs, six of them large eggs. Now it helps also if that, I really, when you're making eggnog, I think if the eggs are at room temp, because here they are room temp out here today, it's like 41 degrees <laughs> yeah, it is. So just crack them. We want what? what was Wrong bowl. We just want the yolk itself. So we're gonna separate these, pour them back and forth so you can get all that out of there. And should I'd like for you to tell me what is your traditional Christmas morning meal? Skeeter sausage casserole. And folks, we have a video on that that has a little Christmas message right there at the end. Shout me at my house, and we being from the south like we are, Shan, know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We would a lot of times have sausage, biscuits, and chocolate syrup that goes on top. And whoo, it is so good. Discard them whites, leave them over, unless you're gonna make a meringue for a pie sometime later on that Christmas day. I need you to get a half a cup of sugar. Dump right in there on top of them eggs. Break out the electric mixer or pull the what you call And whisk until they are smooth and a little thicker. So bear with me. Whoa. Well, you got it on turbo. That's why I'm gonna need shoulder replacement. Okay, you can see that we have thickened up, we have. Let's set it over here and move on to the next process. Well, I need you to get a non-sticking sauce pot, we do, because folks, milk can scorch pretty easily, but we're gonna pay really close attention to this. I don't want nobody going off and going ahead and thinking, well, I'm gonna get some of that stuff they spike the eggnog with, you know, and uh, I'll be seeing y'all after a while. No, pay attention to this, and we're gonna start off with what? About a half a cup of half and half. I'd be really loving me some condensed milk in this instead of just adding sugar to it because it's going to really give you that extra creaminess that it needs. We need about a half cup. And then to that, we're going to add what? Some heavy cream. One cup full. Three whole cloves because that's going to bring us out some tremendously good flavor on this. So let's get this over here and let's stir and bring it to a simmer medium low heat because folks we don't want to scorch none of this then i want you to add what a pretty good teaspoon of cinnamon a little bit of what nutmeg because we got to have it in there it's going to be some good now i want you to stir that up and i want you to bring it to a simmer to where everything is mixed well pull it off there folks and you can pour it or you can dip it but you just really need to be putting like I would say maybe at the least a fourth of a cup of time into these eggs because we're going to temper them eggs. Let me get that stirred up. It's 41 degrees and the eggs is making ice cream out here, Shen. So, so it's ready to go now. Just pour a little and stir well. We don't want them eggs to set. Just make sure you keep stirring all the time. If I hold this. Mm-hmm. You can just slowly pour and stir. Well, I couldn't do it at one handed. Well, we have got them eggs, what you would call tempered. That is the correct terminology. Put your sauce back, saucepan back over there, medium low heat. Get your strainer out just in case there was anything in there that tried to curdle, but also we need to sift them cloves out of there, okay? You can see we caught our little cloves in there, we did. Get that back out of the way. Now, folks, if you've got a candy thermometer, 
go ahead and use that. But like I say, stay on medium low heat. This is sort of like a custard base in a way. We don't want it to get so thick that we can't drink it. But folks, you probably want to cook it till it's maybe two to three minutes or the temperature in there is 160 degrees. Well, you see me when we removed it from the heat we did, we added a little splash of vanilla. And folks, this is the adult kind here. If you wanna add some whiskey, about a fourth of a cup, or you can use brandy, or you can use rum, or you can use it plumb out. Use it plumb out, leave it plumb out. And I'm gonna enjoy. Mm. Do you Deep. like it warm or chilled? I would rather have it warmed, probably. A lot of folks are gonna drink it chilled. And see, I like it chilled. I like it both ways, but to me, this would go really well with breakfast. And speaking of breakfast, let's get on with it. Enough with drinking eggnog and sitting around, we better go to making breakfast or they'll run us out of the house. Now, to start out with, what we got? Get you a large casserole dish, because we need something that would be able to fit that bread in, and we can sop it down in there really good. Sop it good. Sop it. Three cackle berries. And we using the whole thing this time. We ain't leaving nobody out. To that, get in there. We're going to add three-fourths a cup of this homemade adult version eggnog, which is that much right there. And I can done gear and told you, as Justin Wilson would say, this stuff is going to be larping good. A splash of vanilla. Now we gotta have a little bit of flour. I'd say about yay much. And then see if you can get them eggs broke up really good if you can find them in there. Now you don't try to get this pretty smooth, but you gotta remember too, that flour is not just gonna be this slicker. How, how would you say that? Slicker than bugs boots, Shen. That is pretty slick, it is. Yeah, but I didn't have another bowl. This is what you call trying not to dirty up too many dishes because me and the big have to do the dishes, don't we, big? Big is always fond of dishwashing. But you can see that is pretty smooth. Let's give it a little shake of cinnamon down through here where it looks like it's snowing cinnamon on Christmas morning. Which way the wind blowing? It's really blowing. Yes, it is. Well, everything is ready. The cast iron is heating. Need you to get a little old tablespoon of butter and just chunk her light in there while I'm visiting with you. We'll just let that melt. And let's talk about what kind of bread we are to be using. This is what they would call in my country, Texas toast. Just get you a really good thick piece of bread, thick cut. Now, a lot of people use artisan bread or something like that. But if you can find you anything that's good and thick, because we need that body, that texture, so it's gonna stand up a little more and just not like a regular piece of light bread. Ooh, things is happening. Hear that sound. Let's turn the heat down, Duker. Just a tad. Here goes the first contestant. Dip him down in there. Get him good on both sides. I like to try to get the edges a little if I can. You may have to give him a little mashing. Shake off that excess if it's got some on it. Lay them right in here. And folks, we're just gonna let them cook till they're brown good on both sides. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get another one in there. Now from experience of making quite a bit of French toast, I will tell you this. If you leave these in here and think, well, I'm gonna put them all in there and just let them sit there for a little bit and then I'll get them out. Things will get too soggy in a hurry, they will. Let's see if this one will fit right here, Duker. Two at a time is all we're gonna get in there, folks. So. We're gonna just watch them, get a medium low heat, get you a good spatula so you can turn them in a minute. Go ahead and beat the people off the table, tell them to get back, we ain't ready yet, okay? But it's fixing to be.
boy, ain't it a pretty thing it is. Now you see me just frying them up over to this golden brown on each side. Don't take long. Just be sure that you add that butter back every time that you're going to fry some more. But don't burn that butter. Now, Shen got these all stacked up there like I'm a Jethro Clampett. I mean, going to just jump all up in there. I don't know. Can I cut through all of them? But I am going to have a little more syrup. Thanks to my good friend Trevor from Canada. It come all that way. No, let, you don't have to. Do let, that I, the whole I, I'm trying. To. I'm going to try, Shen. Let me get a tight shot then. Hang on. Hang on. I'm going to cut right. Let me move this one. Okay. And I'm going to go right here. Go for it. Oh. Yeah, well, you, oh, you're going through all four layers. <laughs> I have to make sure it's right. Mm. This is the home run, folks. Right. I mean, it brings so much flavor to it in a different way than just you'd be adding milk and cinnamon, nutmeg, something like that. Whew. I mean, oh, so good. This is going to become a Christmas tradition at our house 364 days a year. Get them gathered up in there Christmas morning, Christmas Eve. Let the whole family help you because that's what it's about this time of year, especially is remembering family and to bring them all together. And But remember folks, this is a time that we call Christmas. Now, as you think back through the years for so long ago, there was a star that shined bright in the night. Had a tail on it as big as a kite, they said. What was it shining down on? A little manger there where there lay a baby who we call Jesus. Folks, let's not forget the real reason that we talk about Christmas and the season we're in. It is because the greatest gift of all. And they give that to all of us, they did. And it's not about passing out presents, it's about passing out thank yous and I love yous and hey, I just wanna see you. And I want you to especially remember all those folks who are serving our country or somewhere abroad that's not gonna be home with their families. When you bow that head and pray at Christmas, let's pray for all of them. And it is with great pride and honor that I tip my hat to all those servicemen and women and veterans and those that have kept that old flag of flying back there. Folks, it has been a great year it has. Everybody has come together and oh, how we love you. We do. Me and Shan are so grateful that you said all the prayers for us in this last year. We just ask you to keep it up. But folks, let's really talk about enjoying Christmas time with family. But more than that, let's talk about enjoying some eggnog French toast. You don't have to spike it if you don't want to, but Santa would rather you did. <laughs> God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the best eggnog French toast you ever eat in your life trail. It's time to get festive, and breakfast is the best place to tart. Tart. Oh. We're doing a homemade eggnog and a French toast. French toast with homemade eggnog. Sorry. What are we talking about? Homemade French, nope. What is it? Eggnog French, French toast. toast. French toast and, what is it? French toast with a homemade eggnog. Homemade French nog toast, French nog. <laughs> <laughs> French nog toast. That sounds yummy. <laughs> It's time to get festive and breakfast is the best place to start. Eggnog, if we don't get some breakfast run out of here, we're gonna have to start over.